Hey there, welcome to Healthy Hearing Loss. My name is Dee Dee. The topic today is how to hear with hearing loss, so stay tuned. To get the best experience, go ahead and turn on your closed captioning as well as direct audio to your ears or your hearing aid, and then enlarge your screen. The goal for this channel is to create videos to help people with hearing loss come to watch videos so they don't feel like they're alone. I will cover hearing loss related topics from my own experience. I will share my hearing challenges and maybe some tips and strategies to improve hearing communication. Okay, how to hear with hearing loss. This goes beyond communication strategies. I recently found myself educating someone at work on how I process information due to my hearing loss and how I'm able to understand those around me. And the reason I was educating someone in regards to how I communicate and how I can interpret the world is because she told me that she thought that I always looked very suspicious of everyone around me. I squint my eyes and because of my bad vision, and I forget to wear my glasses, of course, I am not suspicious of anyone. I am merely just trying to read visual cues of people's faces, facial expression, body movement, and also reading lips. Okay, so learning to hear with hearing loss takes a lot of work, a lot of work. The first thing that is extremely important is the topic. Much like you wouldn't be watching this video unless you knew what the topic was, right? Once I have planted the topic in my mind, I will go ahead to my brain file <laughs> and I'll pull out words that, I, that are associated with that topic itself. And what is a brain file? It's basically, it's just my way of saying, bringing information from your subconscious to your conscious, that you're aware of these terms and words that are associated around a certain topic. Now clarifying on a topic, when I enter a room with a bunch of people talking and they want me to be involved in the conversation, I'll first ask them, what is the topic about? And then I ask this the brain file. I'll be honest with you, I don't care for small talk because it takes a little extra energy for me to try to figure out where those small words and small talk fit into the whole picture. I like facts and specific questions and statements and opinions and it's very straightforward. It makes it a lot easier for me to understand. Uh, secondly is preparation, which involves a lot of research. Preparation is done in several ways. My favorite way to prepare is visual. Visual presentations, videos, webinars, that sort of thing. I like videos, pretty much like you probably like videos. It gives you a visual, it gives you somebody to, you know, watch. You can watch their facial expressions. You know, you can read their lips if you're hard of hearing. The other thing is I can listen for the pronunciation of the words, as well as sometimes I can see the spelling of words because spelling really does help me to take notes and to be able to connect connect the dots to what I hear, to the spelling, and then I can kind of put it all together. Now I will watch both female and male videos because male will have a deeper voice, which I have a harder time with, with my hearing loss, but then I will switch it up with a female voice so that I have the deep, different frequencies in my mind. This is to train my brain the different tones of a male or a female, even children. Children can be very difficult to hear not only because their, their pitches are very high, but they're still learning to pronounce words. It's more difficult for me to understand children. So essentially doing all of this is hearing rehab. So you're training your brain to hear, to see, to put the pieces together, to make sense of what is being communicated. I rely very much on written information. If there's a description of a class, or if there is a agenda or past minutes that, you know, for a meeting, I would like to look over them so I'm prepared because it will have the topic in there and then I will be prepared to bring in those words from my filing cabinet in the brain, the one in the brain. <laughs> and before I even go to a class or to a Zoom meeting or a webinar, I would definitely read articles to learn about facts or anything, any words that are associated with that topic. It, it helps a lot because then when somebody says a word and I'm like, hmm, I saw that in the article, I, I heard that in the video, helps me to connect the things, the points together. You know what I mean? An example I'd like to give is say a class 
like pottery, then a pottery is the topic. I can go ahead and research about that and I can be better prepared for terminology that surrounds pottery. Some examples would be, you know, there are different types of clay, you know, there's stoneware, there's earthenware and ball clay and all kinds of different clays. <laughs> you have to learn the different properties of clay themselves, even though practicing with clay is the best way to learn the properties, but there are ways to think about it physics-wise what type of tools they use in pottery. I would research that. Um, I learned the basics to pottery, wedging, centering, in different shapes like cylinders. There's topics on trimming and glazing and, um, and so forth. This is done for when I go to class, I am more prepared as opposed to being completely unprepared and totally lost. And you know, even sometimes when people are wearing masks now, I will go ahead and close my eyes just so I can hear just the sounds of what's going on or what's being talked about versus trying to look at somebody and trying to fight my eyes through the mask. It just doesn't work. A difficult situations that will make it harder for me is multiple people in the room, background noise, the hissing sounds, the air vents or whatever they're called, and then telephone versus Zoom audio. There is a difference. It's difficult to hear, especially if there's reverberation in the room. It makes it very difficult. It bounces all over the place. It just goes, yeah. I basically try to minimize those type of situations so it will be easier for me to understand. I can rely on technology, assistive devices to help me understand a little bit better. I like to be able to give my full attention to somebody instead of being distracted by everything around me and many people around me. Many hearing people can interpret very easily. They can hear anything in any, you know, background noise setting, maybe not an airplane going over, but you know what I mean. So <laughs> many hearing people can interpret, drown out the background noise. They, they don't mind small talk. People with hearing loss, especially I'm referring to myself, it takes an extra amount of focus and work to try to understand and to focus on one thing. If I have to try to focus on different things, it's like trying to learn three different languages. Yeah, it's tough. Gosh forbid I changed my hearing aids. That's like definitely learning a different language. Even though hearing loss can be tough at times, I have to keep it light. You know, I laugh a lot. I try to just make fun of myself because, it, you know, it's okay. It's okay to make fun of yourself. You know, I, I'm not defective because I'm hearing loss. I just find it interesting that I hear so differently than other people in the world. Okay, that's it, folks. If you like this content, go ahead and hit that like button below and hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you'll know about new videos coming up. And if any topics that you want to learn about from my perspective, from my experience, go ahead and leave that comment below as well. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.